it's it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Yakov Eliasberg. Uh, so, sorry for mispronouncing. Who will talk about Weinstein manifolds as cotangent bundles of uh, abro real spaces? Okay. So thank you for uh, kind of be patient with all this my technical problem and thank you for inviting me. Okay, so I hope that I'll, despite this, I will be able to say something. Okay, so first of all, this is a joint work with uh, uh, Danny Alvarez Gavella and David Nadler. So we also have a Laura Starkson collaborating with us at, at the beginning, but then at some moment she decided not to participate in this project because it was too long. So uh, we also benefited from kind of discussion with John Pardon and Soren Galashios. So let me kind of start to, uh, uh, to tell, explain what it is. So when we have a cotangent bundle of, of a manifold, then it has a symplectic, canonical symplectic structure. So when you take a cotangent bundle as a smooth manifold, then it forgets most of like differential topology. Essentially, it rem only remember just mostly just, hom just homotopy type, but like the symplectic, but the smooth topology disappears. For instance, like for, for uh, exotic spheres, the cotangent bundle are all diffeomorphic. But symplectic structure, remember some, but it's not known precisely how much. So, Mohammed Abu Zaid and with some addition by a Colm Smith proves that, for instance, for if you take a uh, homotopy sphere of dimension 4k plus one, then symplectic structure on this cotangent bundle remembers something, namely uh, this, uh, if you remember this uh, group of homotopy sphere, just uh, they, first of all, they kind of classified by whether they bound parallelizable manifold or not. And this feature is detectable by, uh, in this dimension by uh, cotangent bundle as a symplectic manifold. So it's not much, but, but something. So potentially, maybe it's everything known or maybe nothing more. We don't know. It's already a long time passed, but there was no, no progress in this project. So for instance, like you can, you can take a cotangent bundle of four manifold and, and there's absolutely no idea whether it's remember uh, smooth structure of this four manifold or not. So it kind of seems very unlikely the theory of holomorphic curve could be helpful for this problem. Because like power of this uh, holomorphic curve in dimension four, uh, when you work with holomorphic curve in dimension four is we come from a junction formula for positivity of intersection. And when you go to cotangent bundle and you work with holomorphic curve in eight dimension manifold, all this kind of four dimensional advantage completely disappear. And it's just very, very unlikely that you can extract from uh, this uh, any kind of holomorphic curve uh, structure on four manifold uh, on, on in this cotangent bundle uh, information about smooth structure of, of four manifold. It seems unlikely. Oh, well, of course, I don't know. So just the natural question, if you want to address it, whether <coughs> maybe there are some other tool beyond holomorphic curve, which not known to us in symplectic topology, or maybe there are some tools beyond symplectic topology and can be addressed in some other way. And when I kind of like started the, the, this project with Nadler and Alvarez Gavella, some I had some kind of hope that maybe this can lead to such new tools. Now it seems less likely, but still I keep some hope for this. So, so I will define, maybe I will never define probably completely precisely what arboreal spaces is, but let me, let me just start by saying that this is a, some stratified and dimensional spaces, which some very standard finite list of allowable singularities. So just quintessential example, which 
in my view, already uh, captured most of difficulties of, of this uh, arboreal spaces is the following. So just take two manifold with boundary and take a immersion of the boundary of, of first one into interior of the second as, as on this picture. And, and just glue it together. So you just st stack them to, together. So, so it's an immersion with transverse of intersection and you get this union of these two, two pieces. And this is kind of typical arboreal space. So this is what, what, what we get, this kind of like uh, the ob object which, which we get. So this uh, like equivalence relation kind of between the, this object kind of like the one which we really care about is not, not really um, uh, not really diffeomorphism, it would be kind of uh, too much, but it is a some kind of like, let's call it arboreal homotopy. It's a sequence of some certain combinatorial move which be beyond diffeomorphism which you can perform. For instance, in, in this uh, immersion, you're allowed to change this uh, attaching, attaching uh, sphere. You can change via regular homotopy, but not any regular homotopy, but the one which well, Arnold used to call uh, regular homotopy without dangerous tangency. So you're not allowed, like in the moment when this, uh, you have a, ten, uh, it becomes stopped to be transversal, so we have a tangency point, then you, uh, you allow that co-orientation at this point opposite, but not a real allow co-orientation to be the same. So you, you, you allow this, um, uh, yes. And you have, a, for instance, one more, more move you, you can allow. You can just take, for instance, disk, take cut out of this disk some smaller disk and re-glue it like this, like, like this cap. Just, uh, so this is kind of another, kind of transformation allowable with arboreal spaces. And so the question, do we, can we invent any kind of invari any invariance which survive this, uh, this property? So for instance, you, you, can, you can ask, uh, uh, so suppose you have a two non-diffeomorphic homotopy sphere, are they, uh, equivalent view of this equivalence relation. So that means that you, you started with, for instance, standard sphere, and, and then you just kind of like, you did this operation, you cut out this disk, re-glue it kind of identically uh, back, and then allowed to move by this regular homotopy without dangerous self-tangency, and then suddenly you came back, and suddenly you see that it is glued not along this original inclusion diffeomorphism, but some exotic diffeomorphism. Can, can this happen or not? So if you forget this uh, property that there is no dangerous cell tangency, then it's very easy to show it immediately follows the Hirsch immersion series that you can do that. But, uh, but this is a crucial, crucial, crucial property. So, so, so as I said, this kind of, so you, you just take, a, well, this is the same question. So you take a uh, inclusion of sphere to Rn and you reparameterize it by some non-isotopic to identity diffeomorphism F. And the, this question is this uh, new immersion, new embedding, this composition of this inclusion and this diffeomorphism is a regular homotopic to, to inclusion we are regular homotopy without dangerous self tangency. So, what, what follows from this uh, Abazoid uh, theorem that, well, in this dimension, four case plan, k plus one, indeed, there is no such uh, regular homotopy, provided that this corresponding sphere does not bound parallelizable manifold. So, the question is there a proof of this statement? This is a pure topological statement has nothing to do with symplectic topology. So, so it's kind of amazing. We don't know any proof of this fact without theory of kind of advanced theory of holomorphic curves. So, so, it, so can, can we invent any kind of tools to prove this theory? So 
So let me now move to, to this kind of closer to the subject of what I'm talking about. So, so about Weinstein manifold. So, so Weinstein manifold we introduced with Gromov in 91, uh, just as a kind of like symplectic object parallel to, to Stein complex manifold, uh, which are a fine complex manifold. And they are just uh, characterized by, they can be defined as follows. So just uh, let, let me recall that when you have an exact symplectic manifold, then uh, this primitive of symplectic form is called Liouville form. And the vector field dual to, to Liouville form with respect to omega itself called Liouville field. And it can, can be equivalently characterized by the properties that it conformally symplectic vector field. So that means that if you take a Lie derivative of omega along z, you get omega, or if you just flow uh, omega, then it just multiply by, uh, by scalar e to the t. So symplectic manifold with a chosen Liouville form is called Weinstein or Weinstein type. If uh, this uh, field Z is, is corresponding phi is complete. And uh, so it, it, I, I actually define very special classes, not most general Weinstein manifold. It's called compact type of Stein manifold. And if there is a, some uh, domain with smooth boundary in our manifold, such that this vector field is transverse to the boundary of this manifold and outward to transverse, and if you take a complement of this domain, then this complement just uh, foliated by trajectory uh, crossing this boundary. So that means the complement is just cylindrical end. It just uh, consists of this trajectory uh, emanating from the point of the boundary. So this is one condition. And the second condition that this vector field Z must admit Lipunov functions. So that means that it should be gradient light for some function. And we need to require something from, from this function. Uh, actually, it's unknown whether we need to require something for this function, but you cannot prove anything if you do not require. So, so kind of like reasonable conditions of say it's Morse function or say generalized Morse, which means that it can have a say kind of like death birth singularity or it's Morse bot or any essentially kind of any con condition which not to kind of degenerate, you can invent, then, then it's fine. So, so, so Stein manifold has a skeleton and this is just attractor of field minus Z. And of course this attractor, it just consists of stable manifold of zeros of this vector field Z. And it's automatically follows that this stable manifold has to be isotropic and so therefore at most Lagrangian in, in the kind of like for, for the top dimension. And uh, so, the, so therefore the skeleton is well in some sense stratified by this isotropic cell, but we don't have any control how they attach to each other. So it could be pretty, pretty terrible. So, well, for instance, if you take it just R to N with standard kind of Liouville form and the, the corresponding Liouville vector field is just radial and skeleton will be just the point. But on the other hand, if you take a cotangent bundle and this, uh, you take it just PDQ stand, uh, standard Liouville form, that corresponding vector field is just radial along fiber and therefore skeleton is a manifold N itself. And in fact, kind of our interest is is really near the so so what we uh, like because <coughs> this all information about our Weinstein manifold and in fact contained in the arbitrary small neighborhood of a skeleton so so in fact when I will be in the future speaking about this Weinstein manifold what I really will be speaking about germ of this Weinstein manifold along the skeleton so kind of like the, how big this neighborhood is I don't care. Of course, it's, there are problems for which is important, but not for the type of question I discussed. So this notion of Weinstein manifold is too restrictive. For instance, kind of like, I would like to say as a skeleton, when we take a manifold with boundary, 
then the skeleton is a manifold again with itself. But then it doesn't quite fit in my definition because uh, uh, I wanted this kind of like, uh, I, I don't kind of allow the skeleton to go to the boundary, right? So because uh, vector field has to be transverse to, 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 to some boundary. So it doesn't quite fit. So, so you, you want to uh, slightly generalize this notion of Weinstein manifold and say, at first, let's say, we, we allow Weinstein manifold with boundary. And well, what does that mean? Is that near boundary, I want this. So uh, like when you take a cotangent bundle of closed manifold, that this, uh, this is of course kind of non-compact manifold, but it does not have boundary. There's no boundary here. There's kind of infinity, but it's not a boundary. But now if, uh, if you take a cotangent manifold, uh, cot cotangent bundle of manifold with boundary, then it indeed has a boundary, which is a just a restriction of this cotangent uh, bundle to the boundary of our manifold. And what I kind of like in general, I, I, I just, uh, when we take a Weinstein manifold with boundary, I re require that the near the boundary structure, it will be like Weinstein manifold of one dimension uh, or two dimension less and times cotangent bundle of of just uh, interval with this standard form UDT where T is a parameter along the interval. So in particular, for this, uh, for this type of form, notice that corresponding vector field is just to have a component D over DU. It's a kind of, it's a Liouville vector field on, on the Y component, component plus D U D U D U uh, vector field. So in particular, it tangent to the boundary. And then if you take a attractor for, for, for this one, you just get back our manifold. So there are this, uh, all kind of like uh, different similar notion of uh, which uh, uh, called uh, stops and whatever. Uh, there's uh, many other kind of like version of this notion, but, but it's kind of like I, I found it convenient to think this way. So in fact, for, for what it follows, I also would, would like to consider not only manifold with boundary, but also boundary with corner. So, I, and I will talk about this WC, WC manifold and you, you'll see soon kind of more precisely what it is. Uh -huh. so, yes? Okay, so, so, so if you have a corner, then kind of near the corner, for, for instance, like, uh, uh, okay, so here's the would be example. So, so let's start with smooth money. And uh, this, I want to, the, it has a boundary with corner. So what does it mean? Corners, that's near corners. It's kind of look like uh, uh, product, uh, product of, uh, uh, product of some manifold with some kind of quadrant in, uh, in, uh, in Euclidean space. And what I want that like near, so, so the boundary of manifold with boundary of this corner is kind of naturally stratified by this D1M, this top dimensional, this co-dimension one boundary, this co-dimension two corner, and, and there is a point co-dimension N corner. And what I just want that near every boundary phase, uh, boundary phase from this uh, top dimensional uh, phase, D1M, you have a just fix some coordinate, which I call TP. And so neighborhood of this face are just given by this coordinate TP greater or equal than zero. And so in, in, if you have a like a, uh, order two corners, then you have a two coordinates, say TP and say TQ. And then, then uh, there is a kind of like, uh, there's a quadrant in, the, in, in this two corners. So now, I, I take cotangent bundle of M and I will refer to this cotangent bundle as a cotangent block. I will call cotangent block as a cotangent bundle of the manifold with boundary with corner. So it is itself is uh, what I call WC manifold of ma manifold with boundary with corner Weinstein manifold. And as you see this near, near the corner, it just look like cotangent bundle of the corresponding corner strata 
times t star of this zero epsilon to, to some power k. So notice that if you have this, this manifold with this boundary with corner, then of course, this any cotangent manifold has a canonical Liouville wheel vector field, this kind of standard PDP vector field. But I want to consider near uh, near boundary faces of this D1M boundary, I want to consider also some other Liouville vector field, namely like standard vector field. Remember my, my form there is PDQ plus UDT. So therefore standard Liouville vector field in this coordinate will be PDP plus UDU. But instead of I writing PDP plus TDT, it's also Liouville vector field. So I just, I changing form UDT by minus TDU. And so, so therefore this is a, so it's kind of sideway Liouville vector field which kind of like push it to the boundary. So important that this, all this vector field ZP compute on their overlap and also compute with kind of standard canonical uh, Liouville vector field on T star of M. So using this, I will define the notion of the cotangent building. And this is, I'm really suffering that the kind of, I, I expected that I will draw a picture and kind of, I didn't draw enough of them in my file. I draw something, but, uh, but not good enough. Okay, so what, what, uh, what is cotangent building? So you take a order set of cotangent blocks. For instance, you start, so like if you take a building of high, height one, then this is just cotangent block. Now, suppose you have, for instance, two block. So what, what do you take? You take some boundary face of this, uh, or, so first of all, take this kind of core of, of this, of the skeleton of, of this block, this manifold M2. And suppose I just find some Lagrangian embedding of neighborhood of, of, of this M2 near some boundary face to, to, to my first block such that it sits inside. So there's a, if you take an interior, no, not really coming. So you see, I subtracted, I, I subtracted a P here, right? So I just take a like open M2 without this face. And I wanted to sit in B1 minus M1. I don't want it to intersect, intersect uh, uh, core of F M1. And I want it to be tangent to the Liouville vector field Z1. So therefore this piece, this kind of which intersect first block is in fact kind of Lagrangian cone. It's Lagrangian Liouville cone. It's, a, it's kind of like if you project it to, to, to ideal boundary, you get some Legendrian there. So, so you, you, you attach it uh, this, this way. It's in fact the kind of people who know all this handle body. So if you are just uh, attach handle body of handle, you attach exactly this way. And uh, uh, I can extend what I want. I want to extend this uh, embedding to embedding of the whole block, this the whole this neighborhood of this block near, near, near the boundary in such a way that pull back of the vector field Z1 would be the vector field Z2P. Remember in this block, in this block, uh, block uh, B2 near the phase P, which I'm kind of attaching. There exists Liouville vector field, which kind of uh, in negative direction contract, contract everything to P. And I want that this vector, this Liouville vector field ZP in the second block would be exactly the one which is induced by Liouville field Z1. So kind of they, they can cite. And so, so this is a building of two things. But now you need to start to build uh, something of three blocks. And now if you have a third block, then you consider, you, you kind of attach it in such a way that corresponding this uh, uh, part, attached part of, of this M3 
is invariant with respect to both Liouville field. So it's kind of like, um, I cannot draw this, but it, it kind of attached to this corner, right? So, so I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe let, let me check. Maybe by this time something happened, miracle, I already can connect, let, let, let me. You can try to annotate. If yeah, but I, I don't know how, I try to kind of try to annotate, but I cannot annotate my own. Ah, but I maybe I can join via iPad and from my pet, I can annotate my own picture. Just let, let me try. So, um, uh, so let me try to, to join you from my pet if I can. Okay, I connected. Uh, so let's see. Mm. Okay, so let's see if I can. Okay, I can annotate. Fantastic. Okay, so. So, so we, so we have a like uh, you, you see you have you have um, uh, you have one block. So say this is one block, and then I have a second block which kind of attach, for instance, this way, and then I I, I have a I can have a third third block which now attached like this. So it's a, it has a one face inside inside B two and one face inside B one, and on overlap on overlap, this my uh, my you have a three Liouville vector field and all of them commute, and you have you have a the, the, this picture and you can continue this you can so it's like Lego out of this block you can like attach one of them. Uh, using using this property, so it it in fact kind of like it's convenient uh, different point of view on uh, on Weinstein manifold and in fact uh, the the theorem is that any uh, cotangent uh, first of all any cotangent build, building uh, admit Weinstein structure such that skeleton of this Weinstein structure will be precisely union of all this. All this manifold M K, and uh, and also it has a, the following property that if I take a, any Lagrangian in my uh, in, in W minus skeleton, which is invariant with respect to uh, this negative flow of all this, so every block has its own Liouville field. And I, if I have a Lagrangian, which is a um, Invariant with respect to all this ZJ is also automatically invariant with respect to this Liouville structure, uh, this Weinstein structure on this one. So there is a kind of like preferred Weinstein structure there, and it's absolutely kind of equivalent to study this uh, thing in, in terms of cotangent block or cotangent building structure or Weinstein structure. And, and I found this is a kind of for our purposes, for instance, this is a um, much more convenient. Okay, so so by definition, interior of each MI embedded in this building, but not closure, because closure is also kind of it's extend to the closure. But when it extend to the closure, this boundary the attach can be kind of projected to something terrible. There's absolutely kind of no control in general case. But this is a precisely essentially the case of what arboreal singularity is, that suppose you manage to make this cotangent block in such a way that each M 
open M compactified in my manifold to the compact smooth manifold with boundary with corner. And then the skeleton will be union of this compact manifold with boundary with contour. And this is essentially what arboreal uh, skeleton is, except that I need a little bit additional condition on some transversality of how the different uh, pieces come to each other. Okay, so that now I'll start to define more precisely what arboreal thing. So, so arboreal Lagrangian or so I'm not defining arboreal spaces. I'm de defining this just first, just arboreal Lagrangian or Legendrian singularity. So this is the smallest class. So what this is the definition. It's the smallest class of uh, uh, just germs of closed isotropic subset in two n dimensional symplectic manifold or two n plus one dimensional contact manifold, which satisfy the following axiom. First, it's invariant. It's invariant under symplectomorphism or contactomorphism. Second, there is a kind of base case point is in zero dimensional space as arboreal. Okay, then there is a stabilization. So if you have a L is arboreal, for instance, symplectic, and then you take a product with, with R, where R viewed as a kind of zero section and T star of R, then this is a arboreal of the next dimension and uh, arboreal next dimension. So then one property is Legendrian lift. So suppose you take a, this, this Lagrangian arboreal and in effect, it's automatically exact Lagrangian. Then it, it's Legendrian lift to one jet space is a arboreal contact sense, arboreal Legendrian. And there is a one crucial last property. So this property says the following thing. So suppose you take a, say, cotangent bundle, you take a, some M and you take a cotangent bundle of this M. And now in this like unit cotangent bundle, you can take any already arboreal Legendrian. So suppose you take a arboreal Legendrian. And now you take a, you project it. So you take a, take as it's a, for this arboreal Legendrian, you take a, it's front projection. You project it to zero section. And now you take a union of, of, of this, of this uh, Liouville cone and zero section. So maybe it's a bad picture, but uh, okay. Uh, so, so again, you, you take it, take it something, uh, you take zero section, you take something, something, uh, Legend, arboreal Legendrian, and you take a projected. You take a pro projection. And suppose this projection is, so suppose this our arboreal Legendrian is transverse to the direction of to, to fiber. So it's a so projection on every smooth piece is immersion. Suppose you have this one. Then, by definition, this is a arboreal of next dimension. So, slightly more than that. So this this arboreal Legendrian can be disconnected. So, could be, uh, for instance, you have a zero section against the cotangent bundle, and there is a one Legendrian, and you have a, another Legendrian disjoined with this one. And suppose, like, so it's a germ. And they centered at the point which project to the same point in the base. So they are in the same fiber. So then if this projection kind of again transfers to fiber, and if this projection themselves trans kind of generic transfers to each other, then this is again arboreal. So we'll see this picture in the okay. So I, I, I this is a I'm just spelling this out, but uh, maybe it's not important. Okay, so uh, so here this is a picture, right? So for instance, I take a I take a uh, take a, this uh, um, M, I take a this say Legendrian line, and you take a this projection, and this is our 
arboreal, arboreal logic. And then this is, you have, a, as I said, you have a Thule genre and then they project to this transverse line and you take this union of this two cone with zero section and this is next arboreal. Now, in this picture, you take, take this, uh, so when you take this arboreal, arboreal, arboreal Legendre, and now it's supposed to be transverse to, to fibers of projection. And so when I project, in effect, it uh, front, front of the projection of this kind of Legendre graph will be look like this. And this is our next arboreal, it look like this. So arboreal naturally enumerated by uh, naturally enumerated by rooted decorated tree. That's why they call it arboreal. So na namely, like what does that precisely mean? So you take a so tree with a root, and and then to every edge except the one which it attached to the root, you 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 decorate it with plus or minus. So, so then when you have a, this graph, this graph determine uniquely some arboreal model. And this is a kind of like uh, essentially by, by, by construction. So like, so what happens that if you take a three with n plus one vertices, then it's yield model which first appear in T star of Rn. But then it also appear in all high dimension by just stabilization, by multiply, multiplying by Rk. So for instance, when you take a n equal to zero, then arboreal model just as a point. And therefore to get the next model, so this is a correspond to just three with one vertex. Now, if you have a three with two vertex and you have a just one edge and this is a root. So then what you do, you take a, this, uh, you take a, the, the cotangent bundle of line. And then here you take a arboreal, which is de determined by, by point of one, by graph of one point and take it, take it uh, this con construction. And this is a, our, uh, the one which is described by by next one. So if I want to want to, for instance, if I take say for instance this picture with this root, then that that means that this uh, this first appear in uh, like you have a cotangent bond of R two. So you take in, in R two, and now you take uh, this two Legendrian kind of different which do not do not intersect upstairs, and they project project into two kind of, so maybe, maybe I should uh, draw kind of uh, differently. So, kind of like, so you take this one and you take a one which kind of look like this and another look like this. So this is a, the one determined by this one. And for instance, if you take this linear A type graph, so you take a one, two, three, then, you kind of iterate this construction. You take this graph and you put this in cotangent bundle of the plane. And then, then you get precisely picture which I was drawing on, on the pre previous, previous uh, uh, just here. You get exactly this right picture here. Okay, so I think you get some idea how this how this is defined. So they of course become a little bit complicated, but kind of like, but structurally very, very clear. And in, in fact, in kind of like application, like in, uh, you know, like in singularity theory, there is a maps and they have a terrible singularity, but for many kind of application, you can work with map with simple singularity or fold or something like this. And also for, for this purposes in many situation, it's kind of, you can, it, it's sufficient to work with simplest arboreal singularity, for instance, of the type I, I start to talk at the very beginning, which you get by, by this uh, uh, attaching something along uh, transversely immersed, immersed submanifold. 
Okay, so this is a kind of sum of this big picture and like where sign come. So sign come like the, the, the first, first sign kind of issue appear in dimension three. So, so you have a, for instance, this graph and now this is root and now here you have a plus or minus and the plus or minus determined by, by, by this picture, right? So you have a projection and then kind of like in one case you project to, to this picture and project to this picture. And so you have a like conormal of this uh, and conormal of this and they are not symplectomorphic, you can check. So, so, th so that's a kind of like where freedom, like the, each time actually when you do projection, there is a, you have a, always some binary freedom as I said. Okay, so I So there is a kind of remarkable fact, which when we proved, I, I really kind of didn't expect that this is true. And, and, and the proof really kind of, in fact, not, not completely trivial. Turns out that, that all arboreal models are completely unique up to symplectomorphism. So there's a kind of, there is no model or anything. So as soon as you just know this, you just, you have a notation for this for the for the singularity you know what it is you completely determine symplectic it's it's symplectic structure up to symplectomorphism there's no kind of uh, deformation nothing it's just completely completely rigid object and so so this is kind of in fact leads to this uh, definition of this uh, arboreal space we just say that it's a it's a something which have a it's a smooth space which is modeled on this arboreal singularity just lo local charts of this arboreal singularity and uh, so 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 then given this completely just smooth structure nothing symplectic then it determine determine uh, uh, symplectic structure uniquely up to a little bit extra information, some kind of orientation the information you need to add to this completely smooth data in order to, 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 have, a, uh, to have a symplectic model. And this is a, a little bit similar what you need to do when coming from ribbon graph to, to, to have a ribbon structure to to come from graph to to surfaces so this is kind of a little bit similar extra uh, local information essentially the, what is needed is that when you have this when you have this uh, picture you need to know what is the orientation is this kind of like yeah, the symplectic orientation this one or symplectic orientation this one you just need one extra piece and and, and that's that's it okay so in fact, as I said, they define by, by, by local model and this local model can be def uh, in fact given by this, uh, by this formulas. So, so, okay, so, so this, so you just, let's consider just sequence of this hypersurfaces so just, you, you can see how they generated by, by, by this one. So, so this is kind of like picture, but they can pretty complicated surfaces. But then you, in, from the surfaces, from each of the surface, you pick certain quadrant, depending on of your kind of tree, you pick certain quadrant. For instance, if this is a, a positively decorated tree, you pick this quadrant. You intersect each of the surface with, with, some, with some quadrant and take a union of all of them. And my arboreal model and this kind of AN model arboreal corresponding model is a just conormal of union of all this, of all these hypersurfaces. So it's kind of like, look like this. So this is for instance, this for, if you take a conormal of this one, you take a like three dimensional space, take this front and it's conormal together where R3, this is a A4 model corresponding to this positively decorated A4 graph. So question, when can we, so the, the problem is given Weinstein manifold or cotangent building, whatever, can you actually kind of arrange the form structure to make skeleton arboreal? So that was the original kind of conjecture, but turns out it's wrong. 
there is a constraint. It's not true that every, every Weinstein manifold because it's in fact imposed some constraint on the tangent bundle. And, and the, this constraint is, is the following. There's something which is called, I call an n, n minus one polarization. So this is a kind of roughly speaking, the field of Lagrangian plane, which allowed to degenerate at some point to n minus one dimensional subspace. And precise definition is the following. So it's, I, I, I'm kind of uh, off to, to John who helped me kind of to formulate it in, in this form because kind of like originally I kind of was saying this and not, not as nice form. So, so, so then, uh, so the definition is the following. So let, let's consider some symplectic vector space. And in symplectic vector space, take Grassmannian of Lagrangian and take a Grassmannian of isotropic n minus one subspaces. And let's take a flag space, like what well, pair Lagrangian and isotropic subspace. And of course, there are tautological projection of this flag space to Lagrangian and into isotropic. And we take a double cone of, of this one. So just that means that you take a product with the interval and collapse boundary uh, to, to, to either to LN or to, to the other one. So, so now given symplectic vector bundle, you can consider associated bundle with this cone bundle. And this n n minus one structure, n minus one polarization is just section of this cone bundle. And so it just kind of intuitively, it means that you have a Lagrangian plane field and sometimes you're allowed just collapse it to, to, to its subspace. And then it suddenly at some point that again begins some Lagrangian, etc. So it's kind of something like this. And uh, uh, at my uh, request, Soren Galash has made some computation. For instance, he computed that for dimension less than five, any two n dimensional manifold always admit this polarization. And uh, uh, in dimension six, meaning k 12, n equals six, you, you get first abstraction. And for instance, this is a constraint. The third churn class should be equal C1 times C2 in order to, 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 to have such structure. Okay. But anyway, this is just some pure, pure homotopy. And, uh, and, and, and uh, but conversely, if you have a, if you have arboreal skeleton, it's pretty easy to construct this uh, NN minus one polarization. So it's necessary condition for, for arborealization. So in fact, we kind of like hope that maybe there's a so polarization to this arborization too restrictive. So maybe there is a, some kind of different uh, simple kind of like not less simple, but some kind of canonical list of singularity. But frankly, I, I, I doubt it. So I think if you don't have a, any constraint on the tangent bundle, tangent bundle of the manifold, then you do, cannot prove anything. So what we currently prove, we currently prove kind of weaker result. We, we give a necessary insufficient condition for to admit positive arboreal skeleton. And this necessary sufficient condition is existence, what is called stable polarization. And this is just mean field of Lagrangian plane in stabilized tangent bundle. So kind of alternative ju just means that tangent bundle, the structural group of tangent bundle can be kind of, uh, sorry for typo, can be reduced from like U to O. So it's kind of like you can present your tangent bundle, stable tangent bundle as a complexification of real bundle. So that's a, that's a, that's a necessary, this is sufficient condition. It's also necessary for existence of positive arboreal skeleton. So, so of course, uh, kind of like it's e easy to, to show just pure, pure uh, elementary so that like on uh, stable means uh, also implies existence of polarization, but two different polarization, if they stably equivalent, they're not necessarily equivalent. 
is not necessarily homotopy. Okay, well, anyway, so may maybe let me drop this. I don't have much time, so let me uh, try to say something. Okay, so the, as I said, the main, main theorem says that if you have a polarized uh, WC manifold, then, then the structure is homotopic to one with a positive arboreal skeleton with smooth boundary. Conversely, existence of positive arboreal skeleton implies the existence of polarization. So kind of like I, I comment about the boundary. So for instance, suppose I started with just the ball and I want to, to construct a skeleton of, of the ball. Then you have a two, you have a choice. Either you can construct skeleton which is arboreal with boundary, this, this uh, disk, or you can just think about instead of taking ball, you just think about this our ball as a cotangent bundle of the disk. And this and, and then, then it's just Weinstein manifold with boundary. And then in this case, you, you can make it skeleton kind of like going to the boundary. But it's a, the, the same thing. So, so this is just what we completed, and we we, we we actually what we're trying to do now, we're trying to just classify all this uh, arboreal homotopy that uh, to have a kind of the, the minimal sequence of this combinatorial move necessary to, to connect to homotopic arboreal skeleton. Of course, without this, it's kind of useless because you, you need to uh, precisely formulate it. But, but uh, we have a pretty good idea what it is. And of course, what, uh, this, uh, what, what we would like to prove, we would like to, of course, uh, so I think that this NN minus one uh, property, probably it's also sufficient uh, for existence of general polarization, not necessarily positive, but that's, that's not what we, uh, we could prove at the moment. So let me just comment a little bit about the proof. The proof have uh, three main ingredients. So one is this rigid Lagrangian, another is a kind of like arborization of ridges, we call it, and the third one is a theory of positive cotangent buildings. So let me let me just comment on each of them. So what is a rigid rigid Lagrangian? Okay, so rigid one dimensional rigid Lagrangian. That's a, that's it. So this is a it's a Lagrangian which kind of look look like this. So it's just uh, locally diffeomorphic to to this to, to this uh, corner. Uh, or, as a treatment. And high dimensional ridge is just product of, of this thing. I'm oh, sorry. So what is kind of interesting that, for instance, there's a, the following point of view of, of ridge of, of order, order n. So for instance, over order, say, two. So what you can take, for instance, take a Take a plane, and take a, in the plane, you take a quad positive quadrant. And then in T star of R2, consider, consider conor, positive conormal to all faces of this, of this uh, uh, quadrant. So that means conormal to, to, to this quadrant itself, it just quadrant itself. Conormal to this one, you have this kind of half plane going conormal to this one, conormal to this one, another quite half plane, and conormal to vertex is a quarter plane, right? So that's what you kind of get, get this picture. So, so something like this, this is a picture, picture of rigid Lagrangian. And uh, the theorem is the following theorem. So suppose we have a, any Lagrangian distribution in say cotangent bundle. And you don't know anything how this, so you have a Lagrangian plane field, but you absolutely don't know kind of how it's tangent or not tangent with zero section. It turns out that there exists C0 small rigid isotopy 
And Fiji means that like at the first moment, you kind of create this earthquake. You just allow to this our uh, kind of Lija Lagrangian develop some 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 this corners. And after that, you move it by Hamiltonian isotopy. So there is a C0 small region isotopy such that make all smooth pieces transverse to, to this, uh, for this, like in this picture, transverse to this uh, distribution. And this is, of course, extremely crucial for us because that's what we want because we have, a, we have this Lagrangian and uh, uh, say Legendrian when we are touching at this. Uh, like, suppose you already have this building structure and the problem is that building kind of attach this uh, block attach a log Legendrian, which is not uh, project non singular to the base. And now you can kind of, you can make it rigid and after that it project, project non singularity but of course singularity is not arboreal, much, much worse when you get this, the T. And then, then the kind of uh, next thing that this Rigid, uh, you can prove that the ridges can be ar ar arborealized. That in fact there exists neighborhood of this of this ridge Lagrangian can be always made into arboreal Lagrangian, and preserving this transversality to, to this to this uh, distribution. And and then kind of when you take a cone, then you get, then it's arboreal. But then there exists one more problem and this problem kind of precisely kind of crucial problem why you cannot really so so what kind of my uh, kind of our original idea that which we somehow didn't notice we thought that this two step already completely sufficient to get uh, to get uh, this arboreal skeleton but then kind of at some moment we kind of realized that we have a the following problem. So suppose suppose you have a suppose you have a this like three piece block. So you take a, for instance two blocks, and now you you are attaching, so you kind of attaching the third one along some Legendrian, which is a kind of both Legendrian for for both of this block, as I was explaining. And I need to make it, I need to make it. What what's the kind of like strategy to make kind of this rigid and then arborealized rigid to make projection kind of arboreal in this direction? So th this can be done. But then we already not in control when you take projection of this piece of this, like when they take an iterated Liouville cone. When you take a, this Liouville cone and then you take an iteration with this one, you don't know. And you have absolutely no control to make it transverse when you project when you second projection. So this is a this is a kind of like crucial problem, and and that's why uh, and this is a really real problem and arbitration because of this not always exists. But what is, but 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 how does positivity help? And positivity help because of the following theory of uh, kind of like. Let, let me discuss some a little bit of uh, Lagrangian, some kind of linear algebra. So, so suppose you have a two two Lagrangian. So two Lagrangian identify identify space with cotangent bundle of, of one of them, and therefore any third Lagrangian, which say transverse to the fiber, can be viewed as a quadratic form. It just it's a it's a generic function it's quadratic form and this quadratic form could be positive definite so we so there is a, some kind of uh, you can say cone in the space of Lagrangian corresponding to positive definite quadratic form in fact this relation that L belongs to this cone is some kind of cyclic order so if you have a tau kind of like uh, if L is the cone of, of, of this two then 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 uh, also uh, also uh, new in the cone of this two. So kind of you can cyclically permute it and, and all, all this relation remain. And then you can introduce, there, there is a, the following kind of crucial property. And crucial property is the following. So suppose 
you take a, you take a, uh, just a uh, cotangent bound of Rn and tau in nu just zero section in the fiber. And suppose you take a, any other Lagrangian, which is uh, say transverse to, uh, to zero section and nu, to both of them it's transverse. And suppose this triple is the cyclically ordered in the sense what I said, and this mean in the following way. So you have a, so this is what we want. You take a tau and then, then you have a nu and, and there is a eta is look like this. So they ordered in kind of this, this order. And then if you take a in tau, you take a, any hyperplane in the real section and take it conormal. Then conormal Lagrangian would be transverse to eta. Because what it means, it just kind of like you relate, it just means that corresponding quadratic form is, uh, uh, the, some quadratic form is positive and this would mean that it, it, it's, a, it's a positive on uh, uh, like dual uh, vectors to vector uh, uh, to to this hyperplane. So anyway, positivity implies implies this property, and therefore, if I knew some kind of positivity of the attached blocks, then when I attach new one, then if I get a transversality to to the second block, then this double cone will have a kind of automatic transversality. So that's what I, I was telling you, but uh, okay. Well, may, maybe maybe it's uh, too much already. So I wanted to explain this more in more detail, but I don't have time. So okay. So so maybe I'll uh, let me finish. Stop here. So any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? So kind of like, as I said, that my hope is that there is a, some mathematics different from the theory from symplectic topology, which can help with the, so, so there, there exists some kind of smooth topology, which, which, can, which can kind of handle this problem. So for instance, like you have a, four-dimensional manifold, right? For in four-dimensional manifold, we have a gauge theory and this gauge theory fantastically uh, provide invariance of four manifold. Now, suppose would be some kind of version of gauge theory which you can define for this arboreal objects. And maybe not too difficult, but I think this uh, essentially uh, you don't need too complicated singularity, just the, the one which I said at the very beginning, like you take a uh, essentially kind of like uh, singularity or kind of essentially this type and kind of like and, and transfer. So that, that's the worst thing which you can, you can have. So you have a, this type of object and suppose you can define some kind of version of gauge theory or some gauge theoretic invariant for this one, you def can define and maybe you can then prove that they are invariant with respect to this elementary move, which we have. So that's kind of would be would be dream. I have a question. Um, if you have you looked specifically at any sort of uh, Weinstein manifolds, which you know, which aren't handled, which don't admit this polarization and just sort of looked at, tried to study what the skeleton looks like for some example, which you know that you can't make arboreal? No, you, you, you know, okay. So as I said, the simplest manifold of this type is in, di in dimension 12. So not so easy to look. 
uh, this one. So like up to dimension 12 can, they're not positive arboreal, but you can make them, I'm sure of this. Uh, so you, for instance, Laura Starks and proof, like she, she has a paper where she proved in the dimension four, right? for four dimensional manifold, she proved arborization and not all of them admit positive arborization. So some of you have this one. Yasha, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, has anyone tried, uh, if you were asking about uh, whether you can, what, what uh, diffeomorphism invariants of four manifolds survive on the level of symplectic invariants of the cotangent bundle? Um, there are sort of certain basic moves in uh, where you can alter the, uh, alter the diffeotype of a, of a four manifold by, for example, doing uh, log transforms on, on tori. Has anyone tried to see if, if, uh, if you were just to look at, uh, you know, T2 times a disc and then look at uh, 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 twisted versions of it, do you, uh, are the symplectic manifolds genuine, uh, are, the simpl are the cotangent bundles uh, genuinely sim symplectically distinguishable? This is sort of just a, a, a toy version of the problem. Yeah, I, I know, uh, I know good. So uh, no, I, I don't think so. And I, 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 at least I don't know any of this. And and and, and uh, kind of re reason, reason is this extremely. So you know, you know, like like I rem remember uh, kind of jointly with, with Laura when she she was at Starks and when she was at um, at Stanford postdoc. So we kind of like at some moment quite a lot discussed the following kind of like very um, similar question. So, um, okay, so some, something more or less in, in what, what was the type, what you're asking for, 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 for some example. And, and actually kind of like our, our kind of goal was to, was a, you know, it's kind of almost immediately clear that no, none of this kind of like subtle thing which is distinguished by any kind of remnants of even gauge theory in dimension four, it's completely kind of unseen by, by any kind of known invariance which we, we, which we know now. And so, so therefore what we try to prove, we try to prove that it's a, in fact they are not distinguished. So kind of to prove that they are the same. So it, re, it kind of re, reduced to, to, to proving the certain two uh, uh, three-dimensional node in some, some CM seven-dimensional sphere, uh, Legendrian node, that they are, they are I, in fact, isotopic kind of like. But it was kind of, we couldn't do this. So maybe just because it's a little bit too complicated or, or I don't know. So I have no idea whether this, uh, there was a, indeed like nothing exists, everything disappear. Because, because it's a really situation is drastic. As I said, so kind of like, I thought for a while quite a lot about the strength to define invariants using holomorphic curve and kind of convince myself they cannot exist. And then we also tried to do positive thing. And well, th that's, uh, we didn't try maybe hard enough because it's very hard. But, but uh, kind of give a complicated picture, but, but I, I have no idea kind of what, what the answer. I hope there are some kind of like abstraction would be kind of strange, strange if not, but. But among exotic spheres, you, you definitely know that, that some can be distinguished uh, on the level of yeah, their. Some, some can be distinguished, but for instance, like signature, those which like seven dimensional sphere, we cannot distinguish. Uh -huh. So you, you, you start seeing things that what in dimension nine or where you can actually prove that the, the things can- I, I don't know in which dimension is there a first uh, BP kind of non-trivial, I forgot. Uh, um, okay. Oh, very interesting. Good question. Yes, sir. Uh, so what is the relation of this to uh, Derived shadows, is it? Yeah, 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 of course, that's kind of, uh, we, we discuss it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in, interesting, so what is the relation? I don't know. It's, uh, so of course, here, uh, there is, uh, so th this picture that, that is still on the screen is about uh, rather 
uh, shadows uh, because uh, everything is transversal. You have polarization, but on the other hand, this uh, self-intersection numbers uh, do not show up. Maybe it doesn't matter. So, 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 so of course, uh, you, you know, there is a kind of two different uh, problems. So one, one we can, uh, do, so this is, of course, a, if this is a Torah of shadow, then this probably only should be in two dimension too, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so like, so, okay. Uh, two dimensional so, and four dimensional. Yeah, two dimensional and four dimensional, yes. So um, yeah, I, I think I think in this dimension I'm pretty sure that that should be kind of some link and that very close. But but you I, can hear some sort of tangency this polarization and it, I I cannot identify this with anything uh, in Torah's uh, uh, approach. Well, okay anyway, so it's not clear still. I mean, it's not, still not clear to me. Okay, but we, I, I, I really kind of like, you, you know, so this project is kind of going a little bit too long for me. So kind of, I hope that I thought it would finish already two years ago, but somehow it like, uh, turns out that there is a kind of a lot of, lot of rigid kind of quite subtle difficulties. For instance, at some moment we started to prove this no, normal form and then it turns out that it's not so easy. So um, I spent quite a lot of time for it. Okay, so thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, what what is uh, the highest dimension where you manage to perform some meaningful computations? So you said that you need dimension twelve to start, but what would be the highest dimension where you did? No, if 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 you if you ask me, then that kind of probably I cannot go beyond dimension uh, two. Uh, and but I don't know, but <laughs> no. no, but I I, I mean um, you you're talking about what computation of what? Well, some meaningful computation. I, I don't know. No, but but meaningful <laughs> computation. Of, 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 okay, so so you can I, I think given this picture, you you can like for instance if you look at this work of this uh, GPS, Ganatra uh, Pardon Shenda, so they kind of like computing this. Lomorphic curve invariant, and in in some very kind of like elevated sense, that's a kind of like having arboreal skeleton give some kind of algorithm for computation. But I, I have no idea if anybody computed anything beyond some kind of trivial example. So I, I think it's kind of becoming pretty pretty quickly. So it's it's very much reminded, you know, even in dimension. Uh, for uh, I mean, like when you have a two-dimensional thing, then it's kind of essentially like very, very, very close to all uh, question about invariance of Legendrian knots. And so now you have a Legendrian knot, and you have a, some kind of front diagram of this Legendrian knot, and this is of course simple and combinatorial object. But if you kind of try to to prove something, it's not so easy. But you can do in this case dimension, of course, you can do computation. Can you give a sort of say combinatorial proof that say the standard contact three sphere has a sort of unique filling or something like that, like purely combinatorial? I cannot, but maybe it's possible. I never tried. So, but. Uh, No, but this, uh, I don't know, I don't see how this could help, right? So, um, yeah, so you, what do you do? You, you have this kind of arboreal complex, and now you somehow, in terms of this complex, you have to characterize that the boundary of this complex is standard context sphere. Um, not so easy. Uh, maybe possible, I don't know, but so, but this is a, like in, in general, uh, Mark, you, you, you know, this is this, this question, uh, like you, you have a, some, for instance, manifold, say you, you started 
started with uh, say closed symplectic manifold and uh, we'll say remove some divisor. And then we have a contact boundary, which is a, a kind of like come is a neighborhood of the divisor and we can kind of compute some invariance in terms of this divisor you can compute. But then, then you kind of like want to relate it, but it's many for also have a skeleton and you want to relate this invariance with kind of invariance computed in terms of skeleton. I, I don't know, it's, I think it's hard, but uh, do you know any kind of meaningful results in this direction? No, I, this seems like really hard. Yeah, I, I don't know. If I have, if I ha sort of a different question, if I have a, an automorphism, say, of some Weinstein manifold, is there some way to read off that data from a skeleton? Say it again. Go, go, go. If, if I have, if I, let's suppose that I have a Weinstein manifold and I have like some, some automorphism of it, is there some way to read that off? like as as data attached to the skeleton so to, to, to have some kind of combinatorial description of automorphism right yeah in terms of the skeleton right interesting question i have no idea like maybe you can you like take a limit of some sort of conjugation by the flow or something like that and yeah, but I, I think I think kind of in, in general, uh, I'm not sure that there is this kind of this limit alteration, but 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 maybe there is some kind of theorem that uh, that there is a certain operation on skeleton kind of generates this group of symplectomorphism. Of course, it would be great. Right, right. Okay. But but this is a yeah. Thank you, Yasha. Okay. Okay. Sorry for all these technical difficulties. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.